all right welcome back to more ignorance in basketball now before I start I actually just got another email from YouTube and they're saying that if you like the video and subscribe to the channel you will let me make sure I'm reading this right yeah become immortal so you know if you don't want to die you know leave a like and maybe subscribe and you know see what happens it's worth a shot uh, <laughs> Now look, I know that this title of this video sounds a little bit crazy, Devin Booker is better than James Harden, but look, alright, as always, I'm coming to you with statistics, facts, devices, and knowledge. So let's just break this shit down. First of all, when I say that somebody's a better player, this is the perspective that I'm, that I'm looking at it with, alright? If I'm the owner of the Suns, and the Rockets come to me and they want to just swap out Harden for Booker, I'm going to tell them, fuck no. And I'm going to tell them to pay my phone bill for that disrespectful ass ask. All right, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say that was such a disrespectful thing to ask me. You have to pay for my phone bill to make up for it in case you want to do trades in the future. That's how much of a fuck no it is. Now, that may be crazy to some people, but let me explain why. I got a list. I got a pen. And I got a paper to let you know that I'm serious. So let's break this down. First thing is age. Devin Booker is only 24. He's the same age as me, uh, which is the best age. James Harden's 31. He's prehistoric. Uh, he's basically almost dead. So that's the first thing. That's the easy thing. Get that out of the way. Second thing is mentality. Oh, and before I go further, I'm talking about for a team that wants to win a championship. If you just want to be like, okay, and just constantly disappoint your fans and never win anything, James Harden is for sure your guy. But if you're actually trying to win a championship, uh, then he's not. So <laughs> let's get into the second thing, mentality. So as you know, if, you if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're a real ass fan. Uh, and you know that James Harden was supposed to be at his workout yesterday. And instead, this dumbass was throwing fucking ones at strippers during a pandemic. Now, I'm trying to look at this from Tillman Fertitta, who I'm not even a fan of, from his, from his perspective, right? I own a fucking multi-billion dollar team. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of zeros. If I sold the Houston Rockets, I could buy so many milkshakes. You know what I mean? Like a fuck ton. Like enough to fill up like a pool or a house or something. Like something crazy like that. Um... <laughs> So I'm looking at it from his perspective. If you're supposed to be the face of my franchise, my milkshake organization, and you're fucking throw when you're supposed to be at work and the world is watching you supposed to be at work and you're fucking taking pictures and filming yourself, throwing fucking ones at strippers during a pandemic, you make me look bad, all right? You're making me and you at the same time look like an asshole, which isn't even an easy thing to do, but he found a way to do it. And another thing, he has a history of this. Like, this isn't even the first time. Everybody remembers when they lost in the playoffs the same night this asshole's out fucking partying. Who wants to see that? You know, like, if I'm a, if I'm a fan of somebody or if I'm a fan of the team, the last, I want that person to care. I would imagine that hopefully they would care more than me. I mean, hell, they're in the fucking game. You know, I'm just watching. You should be more hurt that you fucked up than I'm hurt that you fucked up. You know, that's just common sense. But according, but apparently to James Harden, it's not because he keeps fucking doing it. But I got a long list, so uh, let's keep going. Bad endings with superstars. So the Rockets have tried to pair him up with Dwight Howard, Chris Paul, and Westbrook, and they all ended poorly. I mean, like, poorly to the point where they lost... And it seems like their relationship is irreparably bad. Except with Westbrook, it seems like they're still friends. But, I mean, at least Dwight and Chris Ball lasted more than one year. Westbrook, one year into the contract, is like, I gotta get the fuck out of here because you're my friend and everything, but you, you're you unbearable to play with. That's how bad he is. And I'm gonna get into why a little bit later, but this is the mentality section. We'll get to that section when we get there. You gotta be patient. Now, maybe Devin Booker was throwing uh, ones at his strip club when he's supposed to be at his workout. I mean, I feel like I saw him at his workout, but maybe I missed something. I don't know. Leave it down in the comments if I'm missing anything. Maybe maybe I'm being unfair. Um, but let's keep going. So third is their play styles. 
Now, Devin, to me, is somebody that can score from anywhere on the court. You know, he can do pin downs. You see him running off screens. He can run the pick and roll. He can ISO, fadeaways, post-ups, all that kind of stuff. I've seen him do it everything. And also, Monty Williams, uh, who seems to be doing a really good job. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, has this thing he's implementing or implemented last year called, I think it's like the half second or 0.5 or one second offense. So basically, as soon as you get the ball, you either have to dribble, pass, or shoot it in the first, it's either the second or half a second of getting it. I don't remember. But so basically, this creates like an offensive flow. You know, you don't just see one guy holding the fucking ball in the corner for like 10 seconds. And nobody touches it so yeah that creates like a, a solid offensive flow kind of like it reminds me of like the spurs how pe like there was like really there was a lot of fluidity with their offense i'm not saying it's as good as the spurs offense or anything but i'm just saying there's a similarity there and also that actually led to them leading the league in assists uh last year 2020 so that's something to look out for i actually looked it up and the rockets were 28th in assists and I'm not saying you have to lead the league in assists to win a championship. I actually think when James Harden and, and Chris Paul, um, when they did their thing in 2018 and they were really close to being the Warriors, I think they actually may have been last <laughs> in um, in assists. But I have I can go into why I think that worked maybe in another video, but I don't want this video to be 35 minutes long. So I'm just going to keep pushing forward. So let's look at uh james harden's offensive play style correct me if i'm wrong but all i've really seen this fucker do is isos and pick and rolls that's pretty much it i've never seen james harden run over like like run from one side of the court to the other i've never seen him like uh, do any pin downs i don't even know if i've ever seen him do any like a fadeaway have you ever seen james harden do like a fadeaway jumper before or a post up I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. I've, I've seen Chris Paul post up more times than I've seen James Harden. And Chris Paul is 5'9". He's lying. He's not 6 feet tall. He's 5'9". He's 5'10", probably, with shoes. Um, <laughs> or, you know, I've never seen him, like, do, like, a Steph Curry, like, run run a run a pin down or anything like run a pin down you get what i'm saying i've never seen him run off a screen or anything like that all i've seen him do is isos and pick and rolls if all you're doing is isos and pick and rolls and step back threes and all that shit it's isolating everybody else on your team like nobody wants to play at the park with the guy who's just dribbling the fucking ball between his legs for a minute and a half and i'm just standing in the corner hoping i get to touch the ball like that causes a lot of resentment and it, it doesn't create like a positive offensive flow for the team. And for a lot of players, that can carry onto even defense. It's like, if I'm not touching the ball, I'm not gonna be motivated or extra motivated to, you know, maybe try to get an extra rebound or play a little harder on defense. Like it can take you out of the game. And I've seen it with players on the Rockets. It's like, who the hell wants to watch somebody dribble the ball for 20 fucking minutes at a time? It's boring. Even as a fan, it's boring. I would imagine uh, as a player, it's even worse. So that's another thing. And obviously, like our boy Kobe said, that shit, rest in peace, that shit does not work in the playoffs. Which brings me to my next point, playoff choking. Now in preparation for this video, just to make sure I wasn't being too much of an asshole, I went onto YouTube, as I do, and I typed in James Harden, playoffs, and literally the next thing that popped up before I had ever typed it in was choking. And I, I went, clicked on it just for research, and I counted the videos. There's 400 billion, literally. I did the math. I counted each one individually. 400 billion videos of James Harden choking in the playoffs. And they're all different instances. I know, it's crazy. Now, I don't need to get into every single time he's dribbled the ball off of his foot in a closing game against a team with their best player out. I don't need to do that. So what I did, is I'm going to compare Devin Booker's bubble stats, because he's never been in the playoffs, so this is all I got, to James Harden's playoff stats this year, because I'm being generous. I think this is one of James Harden's best playoff years, because at least he didn't dribble the ball off of his foot. The team that beat him was a team that won it all. So, you know, it's not that horrible of a look, even though he was this close to losing to a team that most people said shouldn't have even been in the playoffs, and he got basically swept by the Lakers, but that's, you know, that's whatever. Okay, so let's look at Devin Booker. So obviously it was a bubble, so he only played in eight games. He averaged 
30 and a half points. Let's round it up to 31 points a game. He averaged five rebounds and six assists. And he shot 50% from the field and 31.3% from three, which isn't great. Uh, 50% is really good for a, um, a guard from the field, but 31.3 is not great from the three-point line. And he averaged 94% from uh, free throw. Now, I will say in the regular season, I think he averaged 30, yeah, like 36, like 35.6 or something like that. So he can shoot a little bit better from the three. I don't know what the fuck happened, but at least his team won 8 and 0. So I can't really talk too much shit on the guy. Uh, let's go to James Harden. Let's see what he did. Um, so he played 18 games and he averaged 30, 30 points, 29.6 points a game, 6.4 rebounds. 6.6 assists, so half more assists, and he shot 43% from the field, which is shit. Um, <laughs> and he shot less, he actually shot worse from three. He shot 29.9 or 30% from three. So he shot a percent worse. So the one thing Devin Booker did poorly in, James Harden was even worse. He averaged one half more assists. Uh, a game who gives a shit he averaged less points worse from the field worse from three uh, a little bit more rebounds who gives a shit about a guard rebounding and um, half a more assist so I think it's fair to say he was worse in damn near every single way and I know these are just Devin Booker's bubble stats but like I said if I'm if I'm running an organization i'd rather have the guy who at least showed up in the chance he he got instead of a guy who consistently hasn't shown up really ever his whole career uh and he just keeps fucking up over and over and over again for like 10 years in a row i'd rather pick the guy who has never fucked up publicly than the guy who constantly fucks up publicly call me crazy i don't know i don't own a team so maybe i'm wrong now I've been talking, I've been rambling on for a bit, but I think the legend, I think we can all agree on that, Max Kellerman sums up what I'm trying to say perfectly. So let's hear what he has to say. How do you explain Harden's performance? He choked, just like he choked with Oklahoma City off the bench as a sixth man, which really is his best role. I mean, he's too good to be kept as a sixth man, but the problem with James Harden is he's what I would call a dead-end player which means that he's so good, he will be the primary ball handler on some team. He will be the primary offensive option on a playoff team. But he's simply not good enough as that guy to win you a championship. Not good enough. And so in a set, he's tantalizing because if he's available, of course you're going to want to get him. But ultimately, he's a dead end. Now, when I say he choked, am I talking about like... This indicates, Stephen A., some kind of character flaw in James Harden? No, I'm not even going there. But I do think it indicates something about upper echelon athletes once the playoffs start. James Harden's game is largely based on manipulating rules, drawing contact. That's not why that rule is in place, so players can get fouls called on them. It's so the, the defensive player doesn't foul. But James Harden and many others, by the way, throughout the history of basketball, have manipulated and exploited those rules so that they get to the free throw line, right? When he chucks up a, a, a shot, which is clearly not really a shot attempt, but the referees, I guess, like, well, philosophically, you can't prove it's not a shot attempt, and let him go shoot three free throws when he draws kind of BS contact to begin with. They're, they're, he's manipulating the rules in such a way that makes him effective. Um, but in the playoffs, those things get called a little differently. And more importantly than that, when you don't have the upper end athletic ability or some kind of freakish ability like Steph Curry's shot or, or Larry Bird's anticipation or something like that to compensate for other physical or athletic shortcomings, when you don't have something like that and, and so much of your game is based on the exploitation or manipulation of rules and you don't have that high end athletic ability, come crunch time, you are not going to be as effective as the actual best players in the game who do have that stuff. Well, Max, I couldn't have said it better myself. Now, I appreciate you if you made it this far. I do post videos every day, so if you like that, consider subscribing. And also, according to YouTube, you may or may not become immortal. So, something to think about. Um... <laughs> That's all I got for today. Let me know what you guys think. Am I being a hater? Uh, am I being too critical? Maybe I'm gassing up Gavin, 
Devin, holy shit, Devin Booker too much. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. We could talk about it in the comments. Uh, you guys have been really liking that first Suns video. Uh, I've been replying to all the comments and been talking to you guys. It's been really fun. So thank you guys for showing love on that. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and uh, that's it. Peace out.